But wait, there's more. Um, this is, I think, the third one of these that I've done. Um, it's it's late. Uh, for someone like me who gets up at 3 in the morning. 3 in the morning? Oh, my God. What am I, Gunner Miller? Jeez Louise. Um, it's now 10.22, uh, which is very late to do this. But <clears throat> I like to get these out as soon as possible. Um, when people have rebuttals and things to say, I want to honor that. Um, so I'm going to go into, uh, and there's two things to sort of talk about the anarchy stuff that I discussed on, um, full disclosure yesterday, number 12 and the uh, stuff about GPW, uh, lots of responses came in about both. I want to address the anarchy stuff first. Um, so the contention that anarchy was on sale, uh, for sale, um, I'll say first of all, it appears that that is not the case, not the case at all. Um, but what did I base that on? I didn't just base that on conjecture. I based it on one person who said that they were approached um, about buying Anarchy, or at least the inquiry was made, would you be interested in buying it if it was for sale from somebody who would matter? Um, and somebody else who um, said that they had heard um, that there was sort of like conjecture and sort of feelers being put out about buying anarchy. Um, but um, the people who told me otherwise um, and the voices that I so heard, sort of heard and read, Tristan amongst them, uh, I would tend to believe more than that stuff. So I will say that uh, I don't think anarchy is for sale any longer based on what other people have told me. Um, as for the crowd size thing with anarchy, um, a couple people got with me and said, no, 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 they, they've drawn a hundred. Now, I will say that the, what I had heard um, was people who actually work those shows. And the best conclusion I can draw is this. The last show did in fact have a hundred people there, butts and seats, yeah? But the show before definitely did not. And uh, I went back and I looked at um, pictures of those shows um, and I will say the last show, there's a good possibility that there was a hundred there, but the show before, which was also, they were claiming a crowd of around a hundred, um, did not have anything that looked like a hundred. The two crowds were not comparable. And if they're both at a hundred, I don't think so. Um, what am I saying? I don't think, do I think anarchy is like going out of their way to lie? And they're certainly not lying big. I would say that if, if the number that they put out was a hundred and then it's really 70 or 80, that's a little bit out of the bounds of the, uh, the, the pro wrestling 15, uh, as I call it, where you're allowed to add for every hundred, you're allowed to add a 15, give or take, blah, 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 blah. So I will say that that one sort of half passes the smell test. The last show had a hundred butts and seats, but the show before, which they were also claiming a hundred, I don't think did. Cool. Um, what else is going on? Um, there are a couple people who wanted to sort of talk about the thing I mentioned about Dan and how he was ousted and sort of like went against that contention. Um, no, that one I totally stand behind. Um, he was ousted. He was pushed out. Um, and it was made to be miserable there. There was, in fact, some sort of behind the scenes shenanigans. There's a whole involved thing with that. And I have no problem. First of all, full disclosure, Dan is a friend of mine. And I have obviously have a lot of respect for him. So I'm going to see things through his lens. I'm going to see things um, through his side. There's no doubt about it. There's a reason I call the freaking thing full disclosure, right? Um, but uh, I will say that one I completely stand behind 100%. As per a couple people had things to say about Rampage, and it was mostly their theories on what actually uh, shut Rampage down, because I sort of made an offhanded comment that the blacklist and that kind of thing was sort of that. I would say the blacklist stuff was more symptomatic of their downfall. I actually wrote a full disclosure when I used to write that column, um, doing an autopsy of Rampage, which I thought was incredibly thorough. You can find it if you do a search. If I can find it on an initial search. Um, but you're looking for a wrestling autopsy about Rampage um, that was on uh, gwhnewsandnotes.blogspot.com if you want to look at that. And that was my thorough analysis of why Rampage died. And I think it's really good and it's really on the money. It's sort of a combination of shit booking, um, which I, I got to point out, I will point out that we were already out of the Jimmy Rave era of booking. That it was other people who had taken over, notably sort of like Murder and Wheeler sort of had influence. 
uh, and it was sort of there, and, and it was there like push and pull with Ben Masters that certainly didn't help. But it just came down to it wasn't a fun show for Doc Gayton to do anymore because it was basically a vanity promotion where he could just be put over constantly. And once they stopped doing that as much, and he had a, and Doc Gayton had a new love interest. Um, who was probably not a fan of the wrestling thing. It was just a good excuse to get out. And uh, Doc Gayton cited other things like, oh, I'm losing all this money because of Obama. Fucking weirdness. But let's get away from that. So did I address all the anarchy stuff that I had sort of heard about on the back end? I think so. Is it on sale? No. Um, do they have 100 for the last show, yes, but for the show before where they're claiming it, no, probably not. Um, bu -bu 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 what else? Yeah. That's basically it. Uh, and the fact remains that they were still outdrawn by total aggression in their own building. Who did the show the night before? Okay. Uh, I feel better about that. If there's still stuff to say about that, um, people are feel free to, to bound it back and forth with me. GPW. What's notable about GPW? Um, some people described my description of GPW and everything that went on as incredibly brutal. Um, but nobody said incredibly untruthful. And something that I thought was really interesting was a number of people from GPW contacted me. And I sort of braced for the worst. I got to admit, I was just sort of like, here it comes. People are going to be swinging. Not one person took up for Daryl Morris. Not one. Not a fan of GPW. Not one of the wrestlers, nobody. Even people that I would have bet money would have taken up for him wrote me to say, you're right on the money. In fact, you don't even know um, a lot of the stuff that went on. Wow. Apparently, all the hubbub raised about GPW. I, I have heard that the tapped out guys also did a thing about GPW. Um, which I'm going to listen to tomorrow morning. Because like I said, I was for real. I really like their podcast. I'm going to listen to it tomorrow morning when I'm on my run. And um, so, you know, I'll have to listen to it over my huffing and puffing and dry heaving at times. Not pretty. Sorry about that. When you're doing sprint intervals at my age, trust me. Oh, if you get away with just a couple of dry heaves, you're doing okay. <laughs> But shoot, look at my face. Don't look good. Yay. Skinny neck. Yay. Um, apparently, Daryl Morris is frazzled with all of this stuff. Something that I found interesting was these people who contacted me about GPW. More stuff came out about Daryl Morris that... My implication has always been Daryl Morris seems like a guy who's been like playing wrestler person instead of being a wrestling person. And that's the thing that that was the common theme amongst the people that wrote me that he he of zero wrestling experience loves critiquing the wrestlers. Loves taking credit for booking the shows when apparently that wasn't the case for quite a long time, a long stretch. But he, to me in correspondence, basically has said it's been his show for years. He's done everything for it and people should be super grateful to him. And I don't know what I'm talking about. And he's carried the promotion on his back. Look, I'll just lay it out about Daryl Morris. Everything I heard about him initially was that he was some dumb money guy who was throwing all this money away, but he had it to spend and he wanted to throw the money away on the shows. And he, and in his mind, he saved GPW by doing it. But everything points to the contrary, right? They did have a hot angle, but the only reason that hot angle really had a chance to catch hold was because Woody had done such a great job of building the promotion up. Uh, I'll just be co totally honest about me and Woody's relationship years ago. Um, Woody was having trouble, right? And Woody had always been there when I asked him to be on my show. And I always went out of my way to make Woody look as big as possible. 
just because I, I respect the man and he's just a stellar performer and a really nice man and a really good guy, period. There's no disputing any of that. And, you know, I suggested to Woody that he strip his show down to the people that were the most loyal to him and build the show around them, which he did. And that provided the foundation of success. Yeah. Um, am I taking credit for it? No. I will say that while everybody else was putting these ideas in Woody's head about spending more money and blah, 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 I'm always a fan of controlling the expenses first. And people have made fun of me for that. Josh Wheeler made fun of me for that, right? Oh, he's saying it's about controlling expenses. How lame. Is that lame? Um, no, it's called business. And it might not be the sexy part of business, right? There's certain people who are like, yeah, you got to promote, you got to promote. And that's absolutely true. But if you're not in control of your expenses on the show, then you're not running a business. You're running a gambling venture and just praying. And you, you know, then you're having to watch the door for every fan that comes in and just so you'll have enough money. That's just not the way it's supposed to work, folks. And there's been many cases where prominent promotions have run into trouble uh, because the person in charge of the money didn't have enough money when they started and were counting on money coming in instead of having it in advance. That's a, that's a common theme that we see now of people claiming this sort of financial maturity, right? Um, I hate to break it to you folks, I was doing that years ago. Ask Ox, ask anybody. I was the first guy that I knew of that paid for everything in advance. And even the boys did not have to wait till the end of the show. They didn't have to wait for fucking intermission for me to pay them. I had that covered beforehand. I knew I had a reputation to create as a guy that covered his end. And I also had wanted to develop the reputation as a guy that you didn't have to worry about, right, when it came to money stuff. Anyway, I say all that to say this. Um, Daryl Morris, at the end of the day, and this is me completely editorializing and me totally giving my opinion, is a guy who bought his way in and a guy, and there's more than a couple of guys like this in Georgia wrestling, who wrestling people put their stamp on without really knowing anything. and then acted shocked at the monster they helped create. There's many examples of this in Georgia wrestling and I'll talk about it at a later time. But be careful wrestling people, just because somebody has money, right? And is willing to throw it around, that doesn't automatically make them knowledgeable about wrestling yeah you can be knowledgeable about business and the business aspects of wrestling i'm not saying that certainly what i'm saying is why does daryl morris feel empowered to critique wrestlers doing wrestling things why does he feel empowered to say He's been running that show and doing everything for that show when I know that's not the case. Why do people continue to shovel coal onto the furnace of his ego and have done so for so much time that I think a lot of his reaction to the backlash happening against GPW is genuine shock. Right? And the fact that nobody has his back publicly is probably a genuine shock to him. And why do they not have his back publicly? Because deep down, deep down. Remember when that was one of my catchphrases? Boy, that was good stuff. Um, deep down, I think people are having buyer's remorse when it comes to Daryl Morris. Am I wrong? And I think they're having that serious buyer's remorse. Because let me tell you, I say anything negative remotely that could be perceived as negative about anarchy, people come, up, come out of the woodwork and communicate with me directly about it. That's awesome, right? 
Um, the thing I wrote about Southern Honor and about how the end of their show, their big show, was dog shit. Um, people came out swinging, and they're still holding that against me. Awesome. Southern Fried, you know, went on a massive offensive amongst their own people to to try to demean me and belittle me and all this other stuff. Right? Defended their own. Which I understand and respect, even if they completely lied about their crowd being close to a thousand. Nonetheless, um, there were people who publicly defended them. There were people involved in um, different groups that I've said called bullshit on their crowd numbers, and they came right at me. Awesome. That tells me, if nothing else, it doesn't mean that they're being truthful, but it does mean that they have people who want to truly believe. So why then, if I did a hatchet job on Daryl Morris, has not one person come to their defense? It's very interesting. It's very telling. Yeah. Even when the situation has been very serious and the accusation seemingly something that you shouldn't touch, I'm just talking about different things in pro wrestling in Georgia, stuff that's supposed to be like, you know, people will still come to almost anybody's aid but not Daryl Morris um, what is my prediction people have kept asking me what's my prediction about what's gonna happen with GPW my prediction is that and, and I've heard that they're already cutting down to one show a month which is fine that's not that's not an uncommon practice in the summer in Georgia right um, but if they don't come up with something now, now somebody did point out that at this last show that that was them hitting the reset button. Here's the problem with the reset button. What's the ideology and the vision going forward? I don't think they have one. I think everybody's just hoping that somehow it will get better and that Daryl will somehow relinquish some control to people that know what they're doing more. And I hope that that's the case. I'll admit that that's a big full disclosure. That's one of the big reasons I put that thing out there. Do I think GPW without Woody is worth saving? I don't know the answer to that. Not if the main boys who are wrestling on that show and women will just go wrestle on Woody's show. I asked the question last night and I ask it again. Why does GPW at this point need to exist? What is the story that they are going to tell that needs to be told? I didn't get an answer to that question. Not from anybody who wrote me about GPW. It was mostly people piling on details about Daryl Morris and how unreasonable he is, how he critiques the wrestlers themselves, how he walks around like the big swinging dick. And I conveyed my own personal experience with him where he wrote me with this rant about how important he was and how he had done all these great things. Show, don't, tell. Yeah. If you're great, it becomes evident. I don't have to like you to acknowledge your greatness. I try to do it all the time around here. Anyway, but wait, there's more. There it is. Uh, I want to get this out tonight, so hopefully people can look at it tomorrow morning. Uh, my apologies if I was wrong about anything uh, to anarchy. Um, but it's certainly an interesting story. And I have a feeling we're going to see how things shake out this summer. Um, and boy, you know, the, the insult slash backhanded praise thing of may you live in interesting times georgia wrestling if nothing else is certainly in interesting times um, i'm going to put out a video tomorrow is sort of me picking one of my favorite promos and reading it which is something i hope that people do next tuesday on the tipping point a number of people have contacted me lately about being on their podcasts and their things about wrestling. I'm going to get back to everybody 
sorry that I haven't done it up to now, um, but I'm trying to get my own thing going. Um, if there's a promo that you really want to do, and if you really want to be on Tipping Point and read that promo, I encourage you to do it. If you're not doing it because you're scared of what my reaction is going to be, one, man the fuck up, or woman the fuck up, um, and two, don't be scared, man. That's why I'm going to do my own version tomorrow so you can see what I'm thinking about. And you'll probably do a better job than I do. So, great. Anyway, see you later. <laughs>